Hi guys, welcome to Math Skills uh, for Section 2 Biology. So, firstly, we will look at the uh, frequency of bases on DNA strands. So, we've got here the scenario, and you need to complete the table by adding missing values. So, um, the answer follows as um, 16 for adenine and 16 for thymine, because we know that um, strand 2, obviously, uh, it's going to uh, uh, follow the complementary base rules with strand 1. So, adenine goes with thymine, hence 16. Uh, cytosine on the first uh, strand is going to go with the guanine on the other strand, so 21. Uh, guanine on the strand 2 is going to go with the cytosine on strand 1, so 34. Okay. Adenine uh, with timing with viscosta. Once you add this all up, okay, you're going to, to get the uh, missing 29 because you need to add to obviously 100. So 29 of timing on strand 1, it's going to bind with 20. 9 of adenine on strand 2. And once we're on it, we've got here, uh, we had a figure uh, of DNA, which I didn't snip to for this question, but you need to use the figure and your knowledge of enzyme action and DNA replication to explain why new nucleotides only will be uh, added into 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And it's to do with the enzymes, obviously. So the DNA polymerase is specific, only complementary to 5' prime end, hence um, the shapes of 5' prime and, uh, and 3' prime end are different, okay? So the uh, attachment of new nucleotides will start at 5' prime. So here another question. So you've got the percentage of the bases in DNA in different organisms. And here uh, you need to complete the table for the human, okay? So we've got guanine, which is 19. Same will be cytosine, will be 19. Once we add them together, it's 38. 100 minus 38 divided by 2 will give you 31. So 31 for adenine and 31 for thymine. And the structure of the virus DNA is different from the DNA of the other two organisms and give the evidence. Okay, so look, for, for this, okay, we can clearly see the adenine and thymine complementary base pair, same guanine, same cytosine. Same approach applies here in the bacterium, so 24 and 24 for 26 and 26. But when you look at the virus, all of those numbers are different. And this comes from the fact that viral DNA is single stranded. It's not double stranded. Hence, we've not got the equal number of the bases. Uh, then we've got the magnification. Not going to uh, do many questions on magnification, but the only one rule is make sure you know how to convert the unit. So one centimeter, it's 10 millimeters, that equals 10,000 micrometers, okay? So uh, knowing this, you can answer then any questions. And the formula of the magnification, it's the size of image. So this is something that you're going to measure with the ruler on the paper, divided by the real object, okay? So ruler by real gives you magnification and this is the working out uh, in terms of the units. So next skill is quite easy because it's the number of cells visible uh, with the visible chromosomes, so cells in the mitosis, which includes prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, divided by total, so by all of those now, including the interface. So um, that's easy, but sometimes there are harder questions. So you've got the table, and they tell you that the one cycle takes 20 hours, and calculate how many minutes, okay, so from the hours now to minutes, uh, uh, were spent in metaphase. So how to do it? So total number of the cells is 1,000. Cells in metaphase, stands as 20. So we do 20 divided by total, which is 0.02. Then uh, 
Then what we see, we've got 20 hours, but they, they want the answer in minutes. So 20 hours equals 1200 minutes. And your answer of that 0 0.02 is going to multiply by the total time. And that gives you 24 minutes spent in metaphase. Another question could be to calculate in what percentage of the cells the chromosomes would have been visible and show your working out. Chromosomes visible means you're talking about prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. We're not interested in metaphase, but we need to consider that in our working out. So again, uh, total number of the cells is 1000. We're going to add the cells in the mitosis and uh, divide that by total, which is 0 0.11. And they want the answer as the percentage, because the percentage multiplied by 100, so the answer is 11%. Another typical question which they give you with the cells, they give you the information that the cells divide every 30 minutes. This is the beginning of the uh, population, and the divisions were going on for three hours. How to work it out in a really easy way? It's remembering the formula 2 to power n, where the n is a number of the cycles. So let's work out how many divisions, how many cycles first. So we know that one division takes 30 minutes, and they've done it over three hours. So three hours, it's 180 minutes. So to work out how many divisions was going uh that was taking place, need to do 180 divided by 30, which gives you six divisions. So now you can use this formula, 2 to power n, and your n is 6. So 2 to power 6 is 64, but that's if you've started with one cell. Well, how many cells have you started with? 1.35 times 10 to power 4, so multiply 64 by the number of the cells, and your answer will be 8. 0.64 times 10 to power 5 cells. Another skill is to plot graphs. So here you've got a typical question. You've got the mass of sucrose and the time, okay? So the rate of hydrolysis you need to work out using the time. So it was one hour, but they want you to calculate the rate per minute. So in one hour, you've got 60 minutes. So what you need to do with all of those, you need to divide them by 60. And then you need to plot the data. So once you divide it by 60, each of those values, you're going to receive the rate as here. Okay. So uh, the units that you're going to get, uh, get for rate are micrograms per minute. Okay. Where is that coming from? Here. Okay. And what we divided by minutes, okay? So that's where your units coming from. And then you need to uh, plot the graphs properly. So what we're going to plot here, uh, the, they want the uh, the right the rate of reaction, which always goes on the y-axis, okay, over time. So make sure you know rate of reaction always on the y-axis. On the x-axis, you could have time, you could have temperature, you could have pH, any of those. Another skill is uh, to do with the water potential. So in the water potential, okay, they give you the concentration of the sucrose as here per table and the percentage change in the mass. So if it's plus, that means that the water came in, okay, so inside of the cell. And then if it's minus, that means that this uh, cell, actually, uh, the potato tissue has lost water. And the question is to describe how would you use the student's results in the table to find the water potential of potato. So nothing else than uh, thinking about the calibration curve here. So you will plot the graph with the concentration on the x and the percentage change on the y axis. Find the concentration where the curve crosses x. Uh, axis so your graph will look like this for example okay so you're finding this point when uh, the uh, concentration 
crosses the uh, x-axis at the zero, read of this uh, and use another resource to find the water potential of sucrose concentration. Okay, and explain the change in mass of potato tissue in 0.4. Okay, so it's here, 0.4. 